everyone and welcome back to the channel. So we had this insane round, 38 eliminations, 7,500 plus damage on control. We're going to cover it. Today is also the last day of control. Please, 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 you have to have to leave a like because I want EA and Respawn to see that we want this to become a permanent mode. So please, please, please. I'm doing a commentary over this because I actually was just kind of vibing in the middle of the night. I wasn't feeling very well last week. But then I hopped in just to kind of just make sure I was keeping fresh in the game and keeping warmed up and I absolutely popped off. So technically I have music in the background. So that's why I'm going to do commentary instead and then, I don't know, lay some, some, you know, as much tips, guidance, tutorial, anything I can really do to kind of spice things up. One thing I really already, I'm not going to have any cuts in this. And the reason why is because I got so many eliminations. One thing I really learned from this right off the rip was just how good I was with the 30-30 repeater. How consistent, how great my accuracy was throughout the round. I've been sleeping on the 30-30. I hit Masters and I also grinded with Mari and Sarah and pretty close to hitting Masters even on my second account. Pretty much D2 on that one. I'm pretty sure I can hit Masters on it. And also to highlight, I do not have over 2,000 FPS. If you look in the upper right, I have been playing on stretch res recently. And the reason I've been playing on stretch resolution is because, well, it helps me aim better. I've been f finding the enjoyment of stretch res again, especially whenever I've been aim training. And I found that my aim, it's a placebo effect, has been better overall. And so I translated that in game and it actually has been paying off. I've been finding a new love of the 2x4 as well because of control. I think this is a mode that has to be here permanently. I cannot stress that enough. Please leave a like. Leave a like so Respawn sees that this mode has to become permanent. I've learned so much just by playing this because I also don't always have the largest amount of time in the world to play. But this has taught me how much I like certain guns, trying out new loadouts, giving them a try because there's not much consequence to... I guess losing. There's not a downside. You just grind it out and do it. Control mode is a great way to try out various weapons, to play aggro, to try out new legends, to test abilities. Even if somebody's new to the game, just getting them comfortable and just trying it out and seeing if they even like it. I also noticed that the reason I like the 2x4 is because of the I guess the more I'm zoomed in, I think I get a little overwhelmed by sometimes the distance. And I find that I'm able just to kind of micro-correct with the 2x4, especially with the 3030. And as you can tell, I'm extremely consistent. Everyone seems to be running up, and they're doing their best, but it's just not enough for them to really, I guess, clutch anything. We were just absolutely decimating and keeping them off the point, to the point where no points were being captured. I think the thing that a lot of people start to do when they get frustrated in control is they, they push more. They push because they think that they can just kind of brute force it. A lot That's what happened with a lot of these guys. Is they, they just kept trying to brute force it and they're like, well, no matter what, we'll just keep rushing them and it'll work at some point. I think the, the biggest advice and the biggest tip I can give is to take a second, slow down your game. If something isn't working, Banging your head against the wall is not necessarily a bad thing in terms of wanting to improve, but evaluate and think things through. A lot of these individuals, honestly, they seem like absolute bots. And sometimes you do get into bot lobbies, I'm going to be honest. But sometimes really good players also look like bots. And that's because they get frustrated. I do the same thing. I've had really bad rounds of control where I just also do the same thing and just kind of just keep rushing in, making the same mistake and they're saying, you know what, I'm going to beat them. I'm going to win. And the thing that's always made the big difference for me is slowing it down, realizing why it's working or why it's not working. Changing loadout. Changing a legend. Trying different tactics to improve. Or trying something that you never tried before. Also, I've been doing a lot of Horizon as of late. I found my two favorite legends as of late have been Horizon and Watson. The reason why I have been enjoying Horizon so much is I, I know as playing Watson so much, when I want mobility. 
And because I know when I want mobility, because I've played Watson so much, it, it, I really think it makes me that much more knowledgeable as a Horizon. I give everything to my knowledge of this game from playing Watson. I think Watson is still hands down. She's a rough legend to main, but she has so much to teach. And if you're playing Control, you don't necessarily have to play a mobile legend. You always know, and I'll try to highlight when I press my Q, if I'm making a push or if I'm making a play to play a little more aggro, what that looks like and how I try to capitalize on it. I don't know why I thought that was an enemy right there. I do make a mistake. This was almost a flawless run. This was almost a perfect run, but I do get eliminated at one point. And I'm going to highlight that I had no idea where the other person came from. So if I... I pop my Q here just to take height, and the reason why I'm taking height is because, well, there's nobody down below, and plus I'm trying to get on equal footing. So I know I can also try to reset and reposition. There's just so many people here. And so my, my goal, and I, I know somebody also will commented this a lot on Twitter, and this is also something that happened a lot with people who play Battlefield, they say, you're not capturing the objectives. I'm literally on the objective. I'm around the objective. I'm eliminating people consistently on the objective. By me putting this amount of pressure, there's no objectives to be taken. I mean, we have a full lockout. I know these poor guys are trying to rotate and trying to get away. If you're trying to run away, you need to switch up your movement. A lot of mistakes I see, especially when players get frustrated, is they always still go in a straight line or they don't try to vary their movement. Try to make it feel a little bit more overwhelming. Also, You'll see consistently that I, I know how to do the duck and weave tactic here. You'll see me push in, but you'll also see me move away. I know when I can win a fight and when, I, when I'm going to lose a fight. Like You see how this is, this is a good tactic. At least this is trying something new from the Pathfinder that you see here. The downside, though, is still you're going into a push of a 1v4, 1v5. I commend the effort, but you have to remember, what are your odds? You're always playing the odds, even if you're the best person and have the best aim in the world you need to play your odds as best as possible at least as much as you can in your favor so if you got three people on you you're most likely not going to win just because the odds are pretty much stacked against you so play those odds seconds matter times matter so the horizon key right there is also a great push to throw enemies off to get the upper hand on them to cut the opponent off to get different angles so much can be played here. A lot of great positioning, a lot of great angles as well. Also, what you'll notice is a lot of individuals are trying to fight me in a 1v1, but I'm just simply landing my shots. Damage is probably the greatest pressure that you can ever put on opponent. And they aren't running away. They are trying to reposition, whether they're bots or they're good players. Like, a good player will try to land shots and try to land them. They're making an effort. But if you keep in the air, you keep mobile, and you know when to engage and not to engage, you'll make anybody look like they're not great at this game. I can't tell you how many rounds that I've played against even Masters, Preds, if you just position well. See how, the, here's a great example. Notice how he, they are finally dishing out consistent damage against me. Now, I could have gone eliminated there. 100%. I should have been eliminated there. But I'm also re-peaking, so I made that mistake. I'm, ma I'm literally making the same mistake that I'm telling you guys not to make. But sometimes if you know your shot is on and you know you can clutch it, sometimes you just you, you just want to full send it. And it makes a whole lot of sense to do that. But just know where your limits are and how you can get the jump on the opponent. Getting the jump on any opponent, whether they're the biggest name in the scene or not, will make a massive difference of you just being able to output damage. And if you output damage, you even got a little damage on them, it makes a big difference from you winning the fight versus not winning the fight. I think here in a moment, you're gonna see that I did get eliminated. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewind back, because it still shocks me. I crack one, I'm confident. There is, I don't know where this Valkyrie came from initially. I thought she was a teammate based on her outline. So I see, the, this person, I, I, I don't even know how they did what they did. I got so overwhelmed. I don't know why I thought they were a teammate because they didn't even try to fire back at me. I can honestly say that person right there, I, I don't know. I don't know. That that was, I swear that, that that had to have been a bot or something. That That's crazy. I was so overwhelmed, I thought they were a teammate. 
So that this is what slowed me down. I probably could have had a 40 plus elim elimination game, even not more. So let's skip ahead just so we get to the action here. And this is where I start popping off a bit with the Kraber. So I get my first shot in with the Kraber. And this is where things really start to get spicy. I always enjoy the nice Kraber. I was running a 30-30 and the Kraber. The 30-30 point shots were on, as you can tell throughout the whole video. Very consistent eliminations, very consistent damage. Another tip for those that are playing Horizon. Go in the test range, pop your Q, and consistently try, so that was a good shot, consistently try over and over to hit the target dummies down below. And also turn them on so they move around. And I also have videos here on the channel of how you do that. That Valkyrie, I, I believe, is the one that is just pretty much feeding me kills. At this point, uh, this whole team is frustrated. They they just went downhill. They're, they're running to the point and trying, but just nothing is sticking. This happens in Valorant and CSGO. I call this like the mental game, really, where you, you break an opponent, where you have bit, beaten them out mentally, and they just start making mistakes they would never make, make before. So let's take an average player and you break their mental. They will become a below average player. Breaking a mental could be eliminating them two or three times in a row. It could be winning or capping multiple areas. It could be having better positioning. It could be having better angles. It could be even getting hit by a Kraber shot. Getting hit, even if you're a, a pro player, getting hit by a Kraber shot, let me tell you, is is frightening, and you will play different. It happens in pro lobbies. It dishes out so much damage that it is, it is a straight up game changer. So that's another tip. So try not to let your mental go down, even if you're losing, because it's kind of part of the battle, man. It's kind of part of the battle. You just have to try to keep up the the positive mental and vibes, and that was an amazing shot as he flew in. And whenever you're on a hot streak. Realize why you're on a hot streak. How did you get yourself to that point? Was it getting a few eliminations to kind of get you motivated? Was it music in the background? I know for me, music in the background, that's why I'm commentating over this, really, really helps survive. It really helps me out. Get into that frame of mind that I'm going to pop off. And if yours is just kind of breathing beforehand, relaxing, whatever that is for you, do it. Do it before you play. Go work out. Go breathe. Go relax. Get rid of your chores so you're not thinking about them during the day. Because I promise you, you'll you'll get way better games. And you'll continue to improve it at a faster rate than if you have something on your mind that's really distracting you. I think we're about to end the round here. I just want to take a moment to thank all of you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully you like the commentary. It was a good vibe. Hopefully you enjoyed your time. Leave a like. Hopefully this becomes a permanent mode. Thank you guys again. I'll see you guys in the next video.